Matavu Oh Halecha Yaakov Mishkenotecha Yisrael Matavu Oh Halecha Yaakov Mishkenotecha Yisrael ואני ברוב חסדך אבוא ביתך, אשתחווה אל היכל קדשך ביראתך. אדוני אהבתי מעון ביתך ומקום משכן כבודך. ואני אשתחווה ואחראה, אברך לפני אדוני אוסי. ואני תפילתי לך אדוני עת רצון, אלוהים ברוב חסדך. Shabbat Shalom friends, grace and peace be upon you and welcome to another in our worship service. I pray that you are very excited to come together as a community today and be able to lift up your voices and to turn your eyes towards heaven on this beautiful Shabbat. There are so many things that have happened over this past week and so today we come, we give God the glory because uh, so many things could have happened to us. We didn't have to be here, but we say Baruch Hashem. We are still standing by the grace of God and uh, this morning we lift up his name and we give him all the praise. I would like for us uh, to read Read together from Psalm 105. From verse 1 it says, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. O descendants of Abraham, his servant. O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham. The oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. And then it goes down to verse 45b and it says, praise the Lord. On Shabbat, we take the focus off of ourselves and we focus on Hashem who is so awesome, so amazing, so worthy of our praise. And I pray that as we come today, we will turn our eyes, not inward, but upward. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship. <laughs> Bechatuv ran a new tzadikim banonai, la yesharim na batehila. Behefi yesharim tit halal, uvidivre tzadikim tit barach, uvil shon chasidim tit romam, uve kerev kedoshim. When the Lord returned to the captives of Zion, we were like people in a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with exaltation. Then said they among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. So we rejoiced. Bring back our captives, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Though he goes on his way weeping, bearing the store of seed, he shall come back with joy, bearing his sheaves. 
Shir Hamal Beshuv Adonai Et Shivat Zion Hainu Kel Kolim Azimal Eskov Minu Ushoneinu Rina Azim Ruva Hidil Adonai la'asoti mele, Hidil Adonai la'asoti manu, Ha'ilu semechem. Shuv Adonai et shiviteinu, Kafikim banegem. Azor im bedim aberina itaru. Alach yelehu vaha nase meshechazara Gava libi Vela hora muenai Vela hilachti big dola hot of nifla hot me many Vela hilachti big dola hot of nifla hot me many Hini hine she viti vidomam ti nafshi Kegamuhula leimo Kegamuhula lai nafshi Yahel Israel la donai Meata viad olam Meata viad olam Billy beats a fanti, Billy beats a fanti, Imratecha, Leman loerta lach. Billy beats a fanti, Billy beats a fanti, Imratecha, Leman loerta lach. Baruch atarunai, Lamdei nichukecha. Bisvatai si parti, komish betai fiha. Billy beats a fanti, Billy beats a fanti, Imratecha, the man lo echtala. Billy beats a fanti, Billy beats a fanti, Imratecha, the man lo echtala. Meshau chasdecha, leyodecha, v'tzidkatcha, leyishreilev. Meshau chasdecha, leyodecha, v'tzidkatcha, leyishreilev. Al tivau eni regel gava, v'yad l'shaim al tinideni. Sham naflu po ale aven, tochu velo yachlu kum. Mesho chasdecha, le yodecha, vetzin katcha, le yishreilev. Mesho chasdecha, le yodecha, vetzin katcha, le yishreilev. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. 
praise him with a harp and lyre, praise him with a timbrel and dancing, praise him with the strings and pipe, praise him with a clash of cymbals, praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, el bechot show. Hallelujah, bikia uta. Hallelujah, big for a tough. Hallelujah, care of good low. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, be take a show far. Hallelujah, be never be killer. Hallelujah, be tough, um, Hallelujah, be mean, um, we, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, bitzel tell a shama. Hallelujah, bitzel tell a tura. Call and shama to hallelujah. Hallel, hallelujah. Call and shama to hallelujah. Hallel, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, do let her not Ki le olam chasto, haodu la dona ki tov. Ki le olam chasto, haodu 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 la dona ki tov. How do, how do, how do, how do, how do, Ladonaki Tov? Give thanks to the Lord, He is good, His mercy forever endures. Give thanks to the Lord, He is good, His mercy forever endures. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Ishtabach Shimcha Lad Malkeinu Berachot vehodot meata vearolam baruchataronai el melechado batish bachot el haodot adon haniflaot abocher bishire zimra. Melech Elchei HaOlamim Amen. 
Bahu et Adonai Hamevorach Baruch Adonai Hamevorach Leolam Baruch Adonai Hamevorach Leolam Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Vahavta et Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Avavcha, Vavachol Nafshecha, Vavachol Meodecha. Vahayu Hadvarim Haele, Asher Anochi Mitzavcha Hayom, Alavavecha. Vishinantam Levanecha, Vidibarta Bam, Vishiftecha Bevetecha, Uvalechtecha Vaderech, Uvishachbecha Uvkumecha. Ukshartam Laot Al Yadecha. והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך, ויהבת לרעך כמוך. Mi chamocha b'elihim Adonai Mi chamocha nedar b'kodesh Nahorati hilot ahose pele who is like thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorified in holiness? You are awesome in praise, working wonders, O Lord, who, who is like Thee, O Lord? Adonai sefatai tiftach Ufia gite hilatecha. Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruchata Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohe Avoteinu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov, Ael Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanora, Eloyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezocher Chasdei Avot, Umevi Goel, Livne Vinehem, Leman Shemo Beahava 
Melech Hoser, who Moshia, who my gain. Melech Adonai, Baruchata Adonai, my gain Avraham. Baruchata Adonai, Baruchata Adonai, my gain Avraham. King Redeemer, her Savior and Shield. King Redeemer, her Savior and Shield. Blessed art thou, blessed art thou, Shield of Abraham. Blessed art thou, blessed art thou, Shield of Abraham. Ata gibor le olam Adonai Mechaye metim Ata rav le hoshia Mechal keo chayim bechesed Mechaye metim Berachamim rabim Saumech noflim Berofe cholim Umatir asurim Umakaye memunato Lishe ne afar Mihi chamocha bal gibudot Umihi da melech Melech me mitu mechaye Umat miach yeshua Veneamanata lahayot meitim Baruchata Adonai Mechaye ha meitim Nechade shechem kaba olam Keshem shemakti shimo to bishme marom Kakatu valyad nevyecha Vekharaz el zeve amar Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh Adonai tzevaot Melocho haaretz Kevodo Adir Adirenu Adonai Adonainu Matir Shimcha Bechol Haaretz Baruch Kevod Adonai Mimchomo Echaz Hu Eloheinu Hu Avinu Hu Malcheinu Hu Moshienu Vehu Yashmienu Berachamav Leine Chochai Ani Adonai Elohechem Yemloch Adonai Leolam Elohai Ixion Les Dor Vador Hallelujah. Let Shamiru Vene Israel Et Hashabat La Sot Et Hashabat Lidorotam Pirit Olam Beni Uvein Bene Israel Oti Leolam 
כי ששת ימים עשה אדוני את השמיים ואת הארץ וביום השביעי שבת In Zechariah chapter 8, the Lord promises to bless Jerusalem. In verse 3, this is what we read. This is what the Lord says, I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city, and the mountain of the Lord Almighty will be called the Holy Mountain. Let us join together in praying for the rebuilding of Jerusalem. To Jerusalem, your city, may you return in compassion, and may you rest within it, as you have spoken in Zechariah 8.3. May you rebuild it soon in our days as an eternal structure, and may you speedily establish the throne of David within it. Blessed are you, Lord our God, the builder of Jerusalem. Amen. We give thanks to you, for you are the Lord our God, and the God of our fathers forever and ever. Through every generation, you have been the rock of our lives, the shield of our salvation. We thank you and declare your praise for our lives that are in your hands, for our souls that are entrusted to you, for your miracles that are daily with us, and for your wonders and your favors that are with us at all times, evening, morning, and noon. Beneficent one, your mercies never fail. Merciful one, your kindness never cease. We have always placed our hope in you. For all these acts, may your name be blessed and exalted continually, our King forever and ever. Let every living thing give thanks to you and praise your name in truth, God, our salvation and our help. Blessed are you, Lord, whose name is the Beneficent One, and to whom it is fitting to give thanks. Sim shalom tova uvracha, chen vachesed vrachamim vrachamim aleinu, ve'al kol Israel, ve'al kol Israel amecha, barakenu avinu kulanu chechad, ve'opanecha. Kivor panecha natatalanu Adonai Eloheinu. Sim shalom, tova uvracha, Chen vachesed vrachamim vrachamim aleinu. Ve'al kol Israel, ve'al kol Israel amecha. Torot z'chaim ve'avat chesed, ve'avat chesed. U'tzadach ha'uvracha ve'rachamim, v'chaim v'shalom, sim shalom, sim shalom, tova uvracha. Chen v'chesed v'rachamim v'rachamim aleinu. Ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'al kol Yisrael amecha. V'tov b'necha levarech et amcha Yisrael. V'chol e'tuv kol sha'a b'shlomecha. Sim shalom, tova uvracha. Chen v'chesed v'rachamim v'rachamim aleinu V'yal kol Yisrael, v'yal kol Yisrael amecha Baruch ata Adonai hamivarech et amu Yisrael b'shalom
Grant peace, goodness, and blessing, grace and kindness and mercy to us and to all Israel, your people. Bless us, our Father, one and all, with the light of your face. For by the light of your face, you have given us, Lord our God, a Torah of life and love of kindness, charity, blessing, mercy, life, and peace. May it please you to bless your people Israel at all times and in every hour with your peace. Blessed are you, Lord, who blesses his people Israel with peace. Amen. Adonai Tzuhuri Vegali Adonai Tzuhuri Vegali May the Ki mi 
Tetze Taura Ki Mitsion Tetze Taura Udevar Adonai Mirushalayim Baruch Shanatan Taura Taura Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Le'amo Yisrael Bihikdushato Barku et Adonai Hamvorak Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Malek Ha'olam Asher Barkar Banu Mikol Ha'amim Venatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three seers of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah your wife shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you, about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Malech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet, Vekaye Olam Nata Beto Kenu, Barukata Adonai, Noten Ha Torah. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Barkar 
בנביאים טובים, ורצה ודבריהם הנאמרים באמת. ברוך אתה אדוני הבוחר בתורה ובמשה עבדו ובישראל עמו ובנביאי האמת והצדק Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. One day Elisha went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, and a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, And he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call the Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And he said, At this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said to him, No, my Lord, O man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son about that time, the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. When the child had grown, he went out one day to his father among the reapers. And he said to his father, O my head, my head. The father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, All is well. Then she saddled the donkey, and she said to her servant, Urge the animal on. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she went out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is the Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with your child? And she answered, All is well. 
And when she came to the mountain, to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet. And Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, leave her alone, for she is in bitter distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, do not deceive me? He said to Gehazi, tie up your garment and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not reply. And lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. Therefore, he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay on the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And as he stretched himself upon him, the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again and walked once back and forth in the house and went up and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her. And when she came to him, he said, Pick up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Tzor kol ha'olamim Tzadik bechol adorot Ha'el ha'neeman Ha'omer ve'osei Hamedaber umchayem shekol devara vemet vatzedek al ha Torah veal ha avoda veal ha neviim veal yom ha Shabbat hazei shenatatalanu Adonai Eloheinu likdusha velimnucha. Lechavot ultifaret al hachol Adonai Eloheinu anachnu modim lach umevarkim utach yitzbarach shimcha befichokai tamid leolam vaed baruchata Adonai mekadesh. Hashabat. When the Torah scroll is returned to the Aaron, it is customary for us to say, When the ark was set down, Moses prayed, O Lord, dwell among the myriad families of Israel. Come up, O Lord, to your sanctuary, together with the ark of your glory. May your priests be clothed in righteousness, and may your faithful ones rejoice. I have given you precious teaching, forsake not my Torah. Then we sing Eitz Chaim. The Torah is a tree of life for those who take hold of it. Eitz Chaim hi, lama chazikim ba. Ha-ha-desh, 
חדש ימינו, חדש ימינו כקדם. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו משיח ישוע והדיברות של הברית החדשה ברוך אתה אדוני נותן הברית החדשה Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So it will be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let the one who is on the house stop with his goods in the house not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. I tell you, in that night there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding together. One will be taken and the other left. And they said to him, Where, Lord? He said to them, where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu hadvar haemet, Vechayei olam nata betocheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, Notein habrit hachadasha. למען ציון לא אכשה, לא אכשה, ולמען ירושלים לא אשקוט, לא אכשה, עד יצא כנוגה צדקה. לא לא אכשה, וישוע אתה כלפיד יבר, לא לא אכשה. למען ציון לא אכשה, לא לא אכשה. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her triumph goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a torch that burns. And the nations shall see your triumph and all kings your glory. We have a biblical obligation to pray for the land of Israel. Join us now as we pray for the Holy Land. Our Father in heaven, rock and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, the first manifestation of the approach of our redemption. Shield it with your loving kindness. Envelop it in your peace and bestow your light and truth upon its leaders, ministers, and advisors, and grace them with your good counsel. Strengthen the hands of those who defend our holy land. Grant them deliverance and adorn them in a mantle of victory. 
ordained peace in the land and grant its inhabitants eternal happiness. Remember our brothers and sisters scattered to distant lands. Lead them swiftly and upright to your city Zion and to Jerusalem, the abode of your name, as it is written in the Torah of your servant Moses. Even if your outcasts are at the ends of the world, from there the Lord your God will gather you, from there he will fetch you. And the Lord your God will bring you to the land that your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he will make you more prosperous and more numerous than your fathers. Draw our hearts together to revere and venerate your name, and to observe all the precepts of your Torah, and send us quickly the Messiah, son of David, to redeem those who await your deliverance. Manifest yourself in the splendor of your boldness before the eyes of all the inhabitants of the world. And may everyone endowed with a soul affirm that the Lord God of Israel is king and his dominion is absolute. Amen forevermore. We also have a biblical obligation to pray for the land that we live in, that it will experience peace and prosperity. If the land is prosperous, then we too will experience prosperity. Let us all at this time pray for our individual country. Please feel free to mention your country by name. Let us pray. Our God and God of our ancestors, we ask for your protection, guidance and blessing for our country, for its government, for its leaders and advisors, and for all who exercise just and rightful authority. Teach them insights from your Torah that they administer all affairs of state fairly, that peace and security, happiness and prosperity, justice and freedom may abide in our midst. Establish soon the vision of your prophets for the nations of the world. Nation will not raise a sword against nation, and they will no longer learn war. And as it is said, for all of them will know me, from the smallest to the greatest. Amen. Let us now pray for the Israel Defense Forces. May he who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Bless, guard, and protect the soldiers of the Israel Defense Forces and the security personnel who stand guard over Israel and Jerusalem, the city of our God. From the Lebanese border to the Egyptian wilderness and from the Mediterranean Sea to the edges of the desert or wherever they might be, on land, in the air, or at sea. All powerful God of the covenant, Grant strength and victory in this hour to those who serve your land and your people. We pray for the families of those fallen in combat. May the God of all comfort grant them comfort along with the rest of the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. In Yeshua's name, Amen. At this time, let us all join together in praying for Refua Shlema, for healing for those who may not be feeling well today. We pray for healing and restoration of mind, body, and spirit. And we pray Mishiberach, which is a prayer to the one who blesses us with healing. We pray for each and every person Please feel free to mention the names of those who you know who may not be feeling so well today. And we pray for the whole house of Israel and for all of humanity, for healing of body and spirit. <laughs> Mekor ha bracha leimotenu. May the source of strength who 
blessed the ones before us. Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing. And let us say Amen. Mi sheberach imoteinu mekor habracha lavoteinu. Bless those in need of healing. With Rafua Shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. And let us say Amen. May the one who blessed our ancestors, our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our mothers Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal those who are ill. May the Holy Blessed One overflow with compassion upon us, to restore us, to heal us, to strengthen us, to enliven us. May the Holy One, blessed be He, send complete healing, healing of the soul and healing of the body among the people of Israel, and all humankind, and we all say, Amen. Glorified and sanctified be God's great name throughout the world, which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom in your lifetime and during your days, and within the life of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon, and we all say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, adored and lauded be the name of the Holy One, blessed be He, beyond all the blessings and hymns, praises and consolations that are ever spoken in the world. And we all say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life for us and for all Israel. And we all say, Amen. Yit kadal ve yit kadash shemei raba Ve'alma divra chirutei ve'amlich malchutei Ve'chayechon uv'yamechon uv'chayei recho beit Yisrael Ba'gala, ba'gala Uvizman Kariv, Veimiru, Amen. Yehesh me Rabba Mevarach, Lealam Lal Meomaya, Yit Parach, Yit Parach, Vishtabach, Vit Par Vitromam Vitnase. Vitadar, Vitale, Vitalal, Shemed Kucha, Brechu, Leila, Minko, Birchata, Vishirata, Tush, Bechata, Venechemata, Tamiran, Bioma, Vimiru, Amen. O say shalom bimomav, who ya say shalom aleinu, ve al kol Israel, vimru, vimru, Amen. O say shalom bimomav, who ya say shalom aleinu, ve al kol Israel, vimru, vimru, Amen. Ya say shalom, ya say shalom, shalom aleinu, ve al kol Israel. 
יעשה שלום, יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל עושה שלום במרומיו. הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל. ואמרו, ואמרו אמן. He who makes peace in his high places, he shall make peace upon us and upon all of Israel, and we all say, Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. אבינו שבשמיים יתקדש שמך, תבוא מלכותך, ייעשה רצונך בארץ, כאשר נעשה בשמיים. תן לנו היום לחם חוקנו, וסלח לנו את אשמתנו, כאשר שוחים אנחנו לאשר אשמו לנו. ואל תביאנו לידי מעשה, כי אם הצילנו מן הרע, כי לך הממלכה והגבורה והתפארת, לעומי עולמים, אמן. שיר למעלות, אשא עיניי אל הערים, מאין יבוא עשרי, עשרי מאם השם עושה שמיים בארץ, אל יתן למות רגליך. אל ינום שומרך, הנה לא ינום ולא יישן שומר ישראל. 
השם שומרך, השם צילך, על יד ימינך. יומם השמש לא יככה, וירח בלילה, השם ישמורך. מכל רע, ישמור את נפשך. השם ישמור צאתך ובואך מעתה ועד עולם. Shabbat Shalom friends, grace and peace be upon you and welcome to another in our study from the Torah. This week's Torah portion is called Vayera and Vayera means and he appeared. And it tells us the story of how Hashem appeared to Abraham Avinu at the plains of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of the tent in the heat of the day. The rabbis tell us that Abraham was sitting in his tent because it was shortly after his circumcision. And according to the rabbis, this was day three, which is actually the most painful day of the surgery. And he is resting in his tent. Now we're going to read from verse one of chapter 18. It says here, Hashem appeared to him in the plains of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of the tent in the heat of the day. He lifted his eyes and saw, and behold, three men were standing over him. He perceived, so he ran toward them from the entrance of the tent and bowed down toward the ground. And he said, My Lord, if I find favor in your eyes, now please, Pass not away from your servant. As I see here that he perceived, this is what just came to my spirit, that Abraham was a prophet. As we see in this week's Torah portion where God told Abimelech that he is a prophet and he is to return Sarah to him and he will pray for him because he's a prophet. And so it tells us that when he saw these men coming towards him, he perceived, he perceived that these men were on assignment. And so he ran to meet them. And, you know, some of the rabbis and sages are of the belief or they, they, they say that uh, Abraham thought that these men were strangers from the neighboring uh, uh, peoples. And even though they did not believe the same thing that he believed in that there is one God, he still extended hospitality. He showed hospitality to these people. However, based on what I'm reading here today, it says he perceived when he saw these men. And I'm thinking that it could also mean that he saw these men and perceived prophetically that these men were not just ordinary strangers, that there was something special about them. And so he ran to them and said, if I have found favor in your eyes, please pass not away your servant. And I can't help but feeling like I need to say this. May we be able to perceive, you know, sometimes Hashem might send someone to us, whether it's to ask for help or to, you know, look for guidance, to seek counsel, whatever it is. 
and we're so caught up in our own situation, our own things that we're going through, that we're not able to perceive, to perceive what God is doing, to perceive the opportunity that God is presenting for us to do a mitzvah so that we can be blessed by him. And so Abraham perceived that there was something more in operation here and he acted. May we be able to perceive when an opportunity to do good comes our way and may we act on that. May we perceive what God is doing so that we're able to not only be hospitable or to extend kind words or to just be caring or whatever it is, but may we always be so attuned to heaven that we don't miss an opportunity. And like I said before, sometimes these things can happen to us when we become so bombarded by what's going on in the world around us that we miss so many opportunities to do good, where we miss so many opportunities to shine God's light, where we miss the opportunity to give a word of encouragement or to, to speak life into someone or, or, or to deal with a particular situation. So may we always be aware and may we perceive what Hashem is doing in a particular time and season. Let's now go to verse 4. It says, let some water be brought and wash your feet and recline beneath the tree. I will fetch a morsel of bread that you may sustain yourselves, then go on. Inasmuch as you have passed your servant's way, they say, do so, just as you have said. So Abram hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, hurry, three sails of meal, fine flour, knead and make cakes. Then Abraham ran to the cattle, took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the youth who hurried and prepared it. He took cream and milk and the calf which he had prepared and placed these before them. He stood over them beneath the tree and they ate. Now, let me just stop here because uh, the Ruach HaKodesh just also brought something else uh, to my spirit for me to say to you. Like I said before, this was the third day of Avram Avinu's circumcision, a day when he is in a lot of pain. And in spite of his own pain, he was able to perceive a need, perceive that these men needed to be refreshed, needed to to have the opportunity to get some water to wash their feet and some food to eat and so on so that they can be refreshed. And so it takes me back to what I was saying. Sometimes, even in our own pain, be it physical or spiritual, may we be able to perceive. May the person who that word belongs to, may you receive it and hold on to it in Yeshua's name. Amen. Let us now move on to verse 9. It says, they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will surely return to you at this time next year. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well on in years. The manner of women had ceased to be with Sarah. And Sarah laughed at herself, saying, after I have withered, shall I again have a delicate skin? And my husband is old. Then Hashem said to Abraham, Why is it that Sarah laughed, saying, Shall I in truth bear a child, though I have aged? Is anything beyond Hashem? Some translations say, Is anything too hard for God? At the appointed time, I will return to you, at this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was frightened. But he said, no, you laughed indeed. This week's uh, teaching is subtitled, Are You Laughing at Your Promise? And this is what I want for us uh, to talk about today. Because as I was preparing for this week's Torah portion, and as I got to this section, the Ruach HaKodesh said to me, stop. This is what I want you to zero in on today. Laughing at the promise. Ask the question, are you laughing at your promise? And then ask, is there anything that is impossible with God? So let's see why Sarah laughed. 
It says that Sarah and Abraham were old, well on in years. The manner of women had ceased to be with Sarah. We all know what that means. And so Sarah laughed at herself. I want you to understand this. Sarah laughed at herself in the Hebrew. This is how it reads. She laughed at herself because she didn't see or understand how what was being spoken over her was going to happen. You know, when God says to you, I'm going to do this for you, or I'm going to put you or, or seat you among kings, or I'm going to give you a new job opportunity. There are times when we laugh because we're like, okay, this, I don't know how it's going to happen. Sarah laughed at herself like, God, are you serious? Can this happen to me? She said, I have withered and I... I'm old. My husband is old. Can I, at this age and stage in my life, bear a child? All the odds were, were stacked against her. It just wasn't possible. And so the, 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 the Ruach wants us to know that it doesn't matter how things look to us. We have to understand that the one who has made the promise is able to bring it to pass. And a lot of times people even give up on their dreams and their hopes and they give up on the prophetic word because they see so many things coming up against them. Time is passing by. The biological clock is ticking. You have no money in the bank. You don't have enough so that you can step into what God wants you to step into. Maybe he is saying to you, it's time for you to purchase this piece of property. It's time for you to do this. It's time for you to do that. But you laugh at your ability to do this. You laugh at your ability to do this, not understanding that the fulfillment of the promise, right, is not based on your ability. It's based on his ability. Is there anything too hard for God to do? You know, sometimes too, it's not even about what God has promised to us. Sometimes it is about what we see unfolding in the world today. That sometimes we see certain things happening and we, we, we think that, well, what God spoke concerning X or concerning Y is not going to happen. It's ridiculous because of what we're seeing with our natural eyes. And today Hashem wants us to remember to focus on the one who is able to bring it to pass. Now let's continue reading. It says, so the men got up from there and gazed down towards Sodom while Abraham walked with them to escort them. And Hashem said, shall I conceal from Abraham what I do? Now that Abraham is surely to become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by him. For I have loved him because he commands his children and his household after him that they keep the way of Hashem, doing charity and justice in order that Hashem might then bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. I want to stop here because I, I want you to take note of this. Hashem says, should I hide what I'm about to do from Abraham now that he is about to become a mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by him? Then it says, for I have loved him because he commands his children and his household after him that they keep the way of Hashem doing charity and justice. Mark you, Abraham's son Isaac is not yet born. But Hashem says that he commands his children to obey him. Now, his children here could also mean his spiritual children, those who he brought with him from Haran, who he taught the ways of the Torah or taught the ways of Hashem. And so, you know, it tells us that he taught his children how to obey God's commands and to live by his word. And so it says that Hashem loved him. Now I want you to understand this. Hashem loved him because 
of how he handled the assignment that God gave to him, how he was willing to teach his children, those who he had the opportunity to bring into the path of Torah, and also his children, his descendants that would come through Yitzhak. And this is a great reminder to us that Hashem will reward us based on how we pour into others. And also, Hashem is already rewarding Avraham Avinu. He is already confiding in Avraham Avinu, even though the prophecy is not yet totally and completely fulfilled. Why? Because he knows Avraham's heart. And he knows that Abraham will do what he says that he is to do. And this is a powerful, powerful lesson for us to learn here. So it goes on and it talks about how Abraham intercedes for Sodom and Gomorrah and how Hashem listened to his voice and told him that he would not destroy the righteous along with the wicked. Now I want us to move from here and we're going to go down to when we see the promise that God spoke concerning Sarah having a son being fulfilled in chapter 21 verse 1. And this is what we read over there. Hashem had remembered Sarah as he had said. And Hashem did for Sarah as he had spoken. He remembered and he did. It says in verse 2, Sarah conceived and bore a son unto Abraham in his old age at the appointed time which God had spoken. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah had born him, Isaac. In the Hebrew, this name is Yitzhak. And it actually means laughter. It continues by saying, Abraham circumcised his son Isaac at the age of eight days as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. Whoever hears will laugh for me. And she said, who is the one who said to Abraham, Sarah would nurse children, for I have born a son in his old age. And it's so amazing that this child was named Laughter. And God basically, you know, we say God has a sense of humor, right? Because she laughed in disbelief. Right? She laughed in disbelief because everything pointed to the, this being impossible. And her child was given the name laughter for her to understand that God is able to do what he said that he would do. And, and I just think that this is so powerful. So I want you to know that... When Hashem brings to fruition what he has promised you, then you will laugh, not because you are laughing in disbelief, but because you are laughing at the fact that there is nothing that is impossible with God. As a matter of fact, I want to encourage you to begin laughing from now because it's going to happen and you are going to laugh at yourself for not believing God. You know, I want to share with you a psalm that we read. Um, it's actually a prayer that we pray at the end of our meal during the Birkat Hamazon, the grace after meal. And it's from Psalm 126. And this is what it says. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter or tongues with the songs of joy. Now, when people heard about what had happened to Israel, right? They probably laughed at Israel 
because of what had happened to them, you know, being sent off into exile and all of that stuff. And so many people trying to wipe them out and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, Hashem was going to turn the laughter of the enemy into laughter in their mouths. So it says, when God returned the exiles, our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And so we are filled with joy. Let's jump down to verse 6. It says... Let's jump to, down to verse 5. It says, those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. I want you to understand that those of you who have gone out weeping, those of you who probably have sowed with tears, you will return with laughter in your heart. You will return with laughter in your heart. And not only that, thank you, Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach wants you to know that there were many people who, when they saw you moving out in faith, they laughed at you. They laughed at you. They thought that you wouldn't make it. By now you would have had to pack up and come back or you would have had to do something else because what you were doing and where you were going and when you said that God told you to do this, it was so hilarious to them that they laughed at the promise. But you know what? God is going to give you the last laugh. I don't understand what kind of Devar Torah this is where Hashem has me talking about laughter today, but somebody who was doubting what God was doing in your life and they laughed at you, now you are going to have the last laugh. Just as when Israel was returned from captivity, their mouths were filled with laughter. And when the final redemption comes, Israel's mouth will be filled with laughter. And here is why you can stand firm in this word today. Because he who has promised is faithful. And there is nothing that is hard for God. I want you to understand this. There is nothing that is impossible with God. They laughed at you. Oh my goodness. They laughed at you. They laughed at you. But now they're going to have to come back and say, wow, God is really on your side. Reminds me of the word last week. Then they will know. Then they will know. I want us to move on from here. We're going to go over to chapter 22. We're going to read from verse 1. No, we're going to read from verse 9. This is what it says over there. They arrived at the place of which God had spoken to him. Now, this is talking about the binding of Isaac. So when Isaac and Abraham got to the mountain where Hashem showed him to sacrifice Isaac, Mount Maria, it says they arrived at the place of which God had spoken to him. Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound Isaac his son and he placed him on the altar atop the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. And an angel of Hashem called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not touch, do not stretch out your hand against the lad, nor do anything to him. For now I know that you are a God-fearing man, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham raised his eyes and saw, behold, a ram afterwards caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as an offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the site Hashem Yireh, Hashem Yireh, as it is said this day, on the mountain Hashem will be seen. Now, I want to uh, rephrase this uh, as it probably would appear in your Bible. Abraham called the name of that site 
Hashem Jireh or Adonai Jireh. Some people say Jehovah Jireh, right? But Hashem or Adonai Yireh. And some people translate it as the Lord will provide. But today we're going to go deeper into this meaning, this name, Hashem Yireh. So the word Yireh is more than Hashem will provide. It is actually connected to the Hebrew word Re'eh or Roe, which means to see or to perceive. And so on a deeper level, what Abraham was saying was that God did not only provide the ram for the sacrifice, right? But this name, Hashem Yireh, means Hashem will see. Hashem will see. Hashem will see what? Hashem will see to it. <laughs> Listen. Hashem told Abraham, sacrifice your son. As they're going up, Isaac said to him, we have everything, but where is the sacrifice? Abraham said, Adonai will provide or Adonai will see to it. Meaning, Adonai will see to it that what is needed will be provided. And so he said, on this mountain, Hashem will be seen. On this mountain, Hashem will provide. On this mountain, Hashem will see to it that what is needed will be provided. Now, this is so deep because this runs even deeper than what Abraham was saying to his son in the moment. I've shared with you before that Mount Maria is the same place where the temple stood later on in Israel's history. It is Temple Mount, Mount Maria, where Isaac was bound and put upon the altar, is today called Temple Mount. This is where Solomon built the first temple. Do you know why? Because Hashem saw to it. Hashem, as he said, would see to it as Abraham said, Hashem saw to it that the temple was built on that site. The second temple was also built on that site. Today, the temple doesn't stand there because today there is something else standing in that place. But I want you to understand that just as Hashem saw to it, to provide whatever was necessary to make it happen, that his house would stand upon that mountain, he will see to it. Because you know what? Hashem's temple will once again stand in that place. I don't care what is there. I don't care who is there. Hashem will see to it that the promises are fulfilled. And this is why, my friends, we don't need to laugh when a prophetic word comes and it sounds way out there or it sounds hilarious or it sounds ridiculous. Because why? Hashem will see to it. Hashem Yireh. He will see to it and he will provide everything that is needed to bring what he has said to pass. Now, I want to shift to this a little bit and I want to talk with you a little bit about... Um, Israel as a nation with everything that has been happening over the last couple of weeks and it's the same thing that stands as it relates to Israel. Maybe people laugh at us, maybe people talk all sorts of things against us, maybe people say oh God doesn't love Israel anymore, you know, the church has replaced Israel and whatever else it is. And people might find it hilarious and talk about, oh, you know, God is doing this to Israel, God is doing that to Israel and whatever it is. I want you to know this, that when God says something and he makes a promise, he is going to see it through to the end. And so he is going to see to it on that very mountain on that very same mountain, right? Where 
Daniel said in the last days would stand the abomination that causes desolation. Hear me and hear me well. Hashem will see to it. He will see to it. And I want to bring this teaching this week to a close with a scripture that we read in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 25. And this is what it says over there. On this mountain, on which mountain? On Mount Moriah. Here's what Isaiah said. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will provide. <laughs> the same mountain that Abraham prophetically declared that on this mountain, Hashem Yireh will provide and Hashem Yireh will be seen and Hashem Yireh will see to it. Isaiah prophetically said, on this mountain, the Lord Almighty will provide. What will he provide on the mountain? The mountain of the Lord, the mountain where the temple will stand. Let me tell you what he said he'll provide. A feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. Do you know what that's talking about? That is talking about what is called in a Christian theology, the marriage supper. It says that God will provide a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. That is going to happen when the kingdom is established upon the earth. Do you remember what Yeshua said to his disciples? I will not eat this meal again with you until we do it together in my father's kingdom. I will not drink the fruit of the vine with you again until we do it together in my father's kingdom. This is what the Lord will provide. And what the Lord is going to provide is a covenant meal on the same mountain that whoever belongs to him can come and, and eat from this covenant meal. This is so powerful. But that's not the only thing. Verse 7 says, On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples. The sheet that covers all nations. Do you know that you you know? Do you know what is the shroud that enfolds all peoples and the sheet that covers all nations? Death. Shrouds are associated with death, and so Isaiah says, "On this mountain, God is not only going to provide a feast, but He is going to provide salvation." On this mountain, he will provide everlasting life. He will swallow up death forever. This is what it says in verse 8. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace ah, from all the earth. The Lord has spoken it. I also want you to know that when we talk about the Lord seeing to it, Hashem Yireh, he's going to see to it every promise that he has made, whether he has made a promise to Israel as a nation, to Jerusalem as a city, to Israel as a land, to you as a person, to myself as a person, to house of bread as a community, whatever promise Hashem has made, he will see to it, he will bring it to pass and it will happen because he who has promised is faithful so today i want you to understand this you don't need to laugh at your ability you don't need to laugh at the prophetic word and if anybody else is out there who wants to laugh and to mock god's people and to make fun of god's people understand that the joke is going to be on them in the future they will see they will be able to see and to understand that he who has promised is faithful. There is nothing hard for God, nothing impossible for him, nothing difficult for him, and he will see to it. Baruch Hashem. I believe that this is the day when we can say Baruch Hashem. And if there is anybody listening to the sound of my voice today who has lost hope, your mouth will soon be filled with laughter. Until we meet again, Shabbat Shalom and Kol Tov. 
It is our duty. It goes in part, it is our duty to praise the master of all, to acclaim the greatness of the one who forms all creation. And we bend our knees and bow down and give thanks before the ruler, the ruler of rulers, the Holy One, blessed is he, the one who spread out the heavens and made the foundations of the earth, and whose precious dwelling is in the heavens above, and whose powerful presence is in the highest heights. Adonai is our God, there is none else. Our God is truth and nothing else compares. As it is written in your Torah, and you shall know today and take to heart that Adonai is the only God in the heavens above and on earth below. There is no other. <laughs> Bilah samanu kimish bechot hadama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vigor alenu kechol hamonam vanachnu korim umish tachavim umodim. Lifne melech mache hamlachim hakadosh baruchu shehu nate shamayim v'yoseid aret u'moshav yikaro ba shamayim mimal u'shchina tuzo u'shchina tuzo. Begave meromin, who eloheinu einod, emet malkeinu efetzulato, kakatu betorato, viadatayom, viadatayom, vashevota elevavecha. Ki Adonai hu ha-Elohim Ba-Shamayim mimal V'yal ha-Aretz, v'yal ha-Aretz Mi-Tachat Eino V'nemal V'haya Adonai Lemelech hao kol haaretz Bayom hahu, bayom hahu Yie Adonai echan Ushema, Ushema, Ushema Adon olam asher malach Beterem ko yitzir nivra Leit nasa v'chepto ko Hazai melech 
keep you. May Adonai cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Adonai lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. <laughs> 